It's so good to see you ladies. Rebecca Rocco out in California. Terry Smith out in Canada where it's still daylight even though you're one hour away from me. Yeah. Okay, so now we can start that conversation. <laughs> I'll just say this. I saw, um, I was in West Virginia around 1994, and there was this little man they call the mortar man crawling out of the cracks. And I was talking about him with Scott. We were having that conversation about buildings and about um, Tartaria. And I looked it up and someone literally wrote an article about it and it was Rebecca. So I stalked her and found her on Facebook. And I said, hey, was that you? And she said, yes. And so now we're friends, okay? So now <laughs> we've dragged Terry into this so we can have a conversation. And now, Terry, you can ask her a million questions about who's Rebecca <laughs> so that we don't I'm miss sure, it. Okay. So we don't miss it. But so, so I'm going to ask you a million questions. So, Rebecca, how did you find um, these taking pictures of these what what brought you were you sort of drawn to this was there like an inner voice in, inside your head that said this is a really interesting subject or, or like how did that develop for you honestly so i'm an art teacher so i'm always interested in art especially weird art i love you know what people would call outsider art or um, sometimes they call it primitive art. They, there's a lot of names that they use to kind of say, you know, those those art people that didn't go to like RISD or SCAD or some kind of amazing art school, right? Um, I like the the art that's just made by people who just want to make a thing. They're just inspired to make something and they make it. And so um, I was, I lived in Charleston. I grew up there. I was born there actually. Um, and I was walking down the street and I saw all these people looking up like this at this building. And I was like, what are you looking at? What is that? And, and they pointed and they showed me this little dude. And he's just this little guy that's just sculpted out of the mortar that they used to put the, the bricks together in the building. So um, they had done some uh, repairs on the building. And um, the, the person working there just, I guess, took some of the le leftover mortar and made this little dude. And he's, he's kind of squeezing out from between the bricks and um, looks, I'm not sure if he looks anguished or if he looks, you know, intent on getting out or what's going on, but I've, I've always been fascinated. So whenever I'm in, in West Virginia and I walk down Capitol street, I have to look up at this building. There he is. I have to look up at this building and wave hello to my friend. So I took a picture of this guy and then later on, I found this website called Atlas Obscura. Atlas Obscura is just, it's kind of like Wikipedia. It's just volunteer um, posts and people post all of the wild stuff that they see out and about in the world around them. And so it's its a really neat way to uh, find interesting places to visit. Wow. Yeah, its it's a neat website. So uh, when my husband and I moved across country, we moved from West Virginia to California. Uh, we actually stopped at as many of the Atlas Obscura places that we could stop at, um, you know, with a U-Haul hauling a car behind it. <laughs> so, so, wow. So in that website is maintained by, um, like by volunteers or is it like one person's I okay so it's more than one one person in it yeah it's maintained by volunteers and it's kind of like wikipedia in that like you can find an article that somebody wrote and if you have any more information about it you can add to it so like if you go back to that page oh, okay. if you go back to the page there's a listing um it says other other pages there's one that says power i actually painted that mural oh but but I didn't write the article, somebody else wrote it. And then I added more information about it because uh, if you scroll down, let's see. Oh yeah, so oh, see where power. it says nearby? Where it says nearby, there's one that says power. Oh, right, yeah, on the, on the far, on the right. Yeah. And so oh. my husband and I painted that mural and somebody added that to the website. And then I went back in and I added more information um, to give them some uh, some perspective. 
Okay, so that, oh, that's a really neat, it looks like it's mosaic art, but you actually painted the squares. Is that what you did with it? Yeah, it's pixelated. So it's, it's oh. kind of like a mosaic and it's designed so that whether you're driving past it or standing there or looking at it from across the river. Yeah. You can experience it different ways. Oh, so is there, when you experience it, is like, was there a, a hidden picture in the back or, or part of it? Is it, or... It's not a hidden picture. It's just abstract, but um, it's abstract. Okay. Fun fact. It's actually comes from a photo. Uh, I took a long exposure photo of a carnival ride because okay. my teeny tiny daughter was on this ride and I was freaking out because it was one of those upside down, spinny, scary rides. And she oh. was so little, I was worried she was going to be scared, but she got on it anyway. So I had to distract myself by doing something. So I had a camera and just started taking pictures of this ride and it made this really cool design and then I pixelated it in photoshop and then turned it into a big mural wow so now, well, and, and what did you paint that with is it an acrylic paint is it has it um it's exterior latex paint oh it's an exterior latex paint. because it gets full sun it is like bright 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 sun 24 7 so um I wanted to get something that was going to withstand the the weather um did and it gets splashes and everything so when you did it on on that particular wall, did you have to get any kind of um, permits to do it? Or did you go there in the middle of the night and just start painting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that badass. <laughs> no, it You're was, not a graffiti artist. I'm not a graffiti because, artist. Actually, the graffiti no. artist is another thing. <laughs> I have too much anxiety for that kind of life. Um, <laughs> No, it was, uh, so the city put out what they call an RFP or request for proposals. And oh, okay. I responded and I made a proposal for this mural and I was chosen. Oh, and then okay. I showed my then boyfriend, who is now my husband, uh, I showed him the wall and I said, Hey, I, I won this proposal. I'm going to paint this wall. And he went and looked at it with me and he was like, you're going to what? <laughs> and he ended up helping me. How, how long did it take you? Oh gosh, it took way too long because the weather was really humid and the type of paint that we were using, you can't, you can't paint when it's above 80% humidity. And so it, that summer, it just rained and rained and rained. And even on days it, it didn't rain, it was like really humid. So we couldn't paint. So it took most of the summer. So as I'm looking at, at the picture in the background and it's like, wow, looking at the colors, like you must've had a palette for each one of those squares because they're not the same color. You would have, what, what were you doing? Mixing the colors? We mix uh, the colors. As, so if uh, you look up close, you can see like little swirls in the paint where the color is just mixed. And I wanted it to have kind of of a graffiti style. So it's like, it's kind of very spontaneous and there's all the swirls and everything. Wow. That's, I, I, you know, like having done some painting, it's like, oh my gosh, like how long would it have <laughs> that, to do that? And, and each one of those squares is, is unique, you know, like you've got mm -hmm. colors all, all over. And so I'm sure that you were looking at the exposure of the picture that you had, and then you're trying to emulate it. And it's like, oh no, this one isn't right. <laughs> we had a map. So it was yeah. like, little sections of the of the uh painting of the yeah. of the photo and then we had you know the squares were, were numbered mm -hmm. and that it was like basically like paint by number and then if people showed up there were people from the city who were just walking by or you know it's a really busy place it's right by the ballpark um uh, people would show up and and we would say you want to paint a square and they would say yeah I want to paint a square and we would let them pick the color and we would find a square that was that color and say you have at it <laughs> well that's really cool and, and how 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 large is that painting or that art it's piece? two city blocks oh, oh my oh. gosh <laughs> wow it's wow it's, it's huge wow that's amazing it was really fun though it was the only thing was it was also very hot because there is no sidewalk there there's no trees there's no shade it is 100% sun and it was a hot West Virginia, humid summer. And like, I'm sure that Erica can remember what those West Virginia summers are like. It's very, oh, wow. yeah, <laughs> it was really hot. It was amazing because it is 
it's, you know, a place that snows and so beautiful with snow, but then it was also just amazing how, um, with the heat as well. But uh, you know what, the one thing I liked about it, there was a park there where there was this big tree and the snow covered it. I never seen anything like this before. And I wish I had the pictures how the park inches would, it'd be like a foot of snow, but it still have the shape of the bench, right? The, the tree was covered with snow and we would go underneath the tree and it like five of us would sit underneath a tree and it would be like we were inside of an igloo oh, underneath wow. a tree and it was like just so still and quiet and, and we That's were cool. warm because it was like this igloo effect when we were underneath the tree but yeah that was a that was a beautiful uh place yeah, we were not far from the water. We were in like the Charleston Job Corps when it was in the main city still. Yeah. So when you were there, it was behind the library, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I know the hotel and there was like a, it, it was like we were right there in the middle of the city. We could walk mm -hmm. to the mall. It wasn't very far. And then I remember uh, like a convention center type place where they had the concerts and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, that was an interesting time for me. <laughs> that was my late late teen years, right before. And I did go to West Virginia State College for a while. So that job corps, even though I already had a diploma, I went to job corps, and um, and I uh, they put me in college over there. Like they helped me with this college program. I took offset. It was very strange. <laughs> it was like like what am I gonna do with offset printing? But. <laughs> Job Corps is a really cool program. It it really is for people because it really gets you started on yeah. whatever you want. Because I remember, oh my God, that was the first time I saw that. Uh, oh man, it's the the miracle of life video. Have you ever seen that video? Yeah. Woo! And <laughs> the guy who was, I was sitting there, and I'm supposed to watch the miracle of life, and this guy had it going fast forward rewind fast forward. now this is the baby coming out of the canal and he was just like playing with it he was like nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. and I was like oh my god no. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah they they did a lot of, uh, some some people did uh hair some people did offset printing they send you to college we would play volleyball like we would play you know have different sports but then we it was just it was a lot it was a lot. And then they help you with resumes and how to dress for an interview. Like we would do practice interviews and stuff. There was a lot, a lot of skills you could learn there. A lot of, a lot of things you could learn. And so you've actually worked with the school. It's funny because we're, we're, we're like the same age. So at that time I'm like 19 and you're probably like maybe 20. Yeah. And, and we're there, but we don't know each other, but now we do. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so weird. I've met so many people that I should have met before. Yeah since moving out of West Virginia. <laughs> and it's always like, you find out that like you're, you were in the same place at the same time, or, you know, you lived in the same neighborhood, like a block apart, but you never met, you know, that kind of stuff. You probably went grocery shopping at the same time, walked the same streets, and yet you didn't meet until it was the time. You probably got that last package of peeps. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I'm so mad about it, by the way. <laughs> I said then to so kid, kid, you say that since I wasn't in Orlando, I saw a girl I went to college with there from West Virginia. I saw her here at the VA hospital. Then when I was in Germany, another guy I went to college with there, I saw him in Germany just randomly, like, oh my God, like, oh my God, like, okay. So that's so crazy. It is, it is, it is, it is. I love it. I ran into a former student here in the Bay Area. He was one wow. of my students at Charleston Catholic High School. And he's now here in the Bay Area. And I was just walking down the street and it was like, I know you. So I'm looking behind you. You have a mosaic behind you. Yeah, this is, so this is the, the tiny baby <laughs> sister. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. You really love art. You I do. Got, you got all the supplies. Are you like one of those people? I say once we get adults, we just kind of spend all our extra money on <laughs> our well, I got, 
the lady got all my supplies <laughs> over here. But the thing is, when you teach school, it's like it's 24 seven. So, you know, sometimes I'm not getting out of school until six, seven o'clock at night. You know, all those people that say like, oh, it must be nice to be a teacher. You go to work at nine o'clock and you come home at three and you have summers off. And it's like, no, no, it's not like that at all. So <laughs> it's it so I try to do art. I'm going to tell you this, though. It is here because when whenever I was picking my son up, the teachers would be backing up. I'm still in the loop trying to get my son and the teachers here. They were like backing up like, get out of the way. <laughs> so, they probably have to get to meetings across town because like we have meetings here and I'm like, this is Oakland. You can't get there in that amount of time. Like, <laughs> wow. yeah, you got training, you, you got meetings. Even if we have meetings on Zoom, like you still got to get home and get in your comfy pants real quick so that you can get on Zoom. So oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> No. Or sometimes you just take them off because now I was gonna, I, was gonna say. I mean nobody has to know. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> just the top part of you. <laughs> that was lockdown. We were in lockdown for a year and a half, and most of the time I was wearing like something professional up here and definitely leggings on the bottom mm -hmm. or pajama pants. Definitely. <laughs> so that year while you were taking that trip you took up uh, a mission writing basically writing for obscura that year right well i didn't write i just visited as many of the sites as i could and the ones that i could add information to i added some information to but we um okay yeah you we came down here as a guide to where you were gonna stop is that yeah, exactly oh now i understand so we planned our stops around where wherever there were Atlas Obscura sites and wherever there was parking for this big behemoth that we were driving across the desert. <laughs> it was it was kind of a crazy thing. I think um, if I'm ever going to move again, I'm just going to take all my stuff out into the yard and just burn it and like start new wherever I go. I'm never doing that again because that was just maneuvering that truck was was rough. And it's not comfortable travel, but it was a really fun trip. I recommend anybody who gets a chance to drive across country to just do it, not with a U-Haul and check it out because there's just, and, and you can use Atlas Obscura while, on, along the way. <laughs> wow, interesting. So what were some of the other things that you saw along your way? Um, I can show you. Yeah. It's, can, I, can I share screen? Is it cool? Yeah, I think you're, yeah, you're the co-host, you, you're the co-pilot. Okay, here we go. Um, can you guys see my photos? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I called it art transplant because that's what, that's what it was. My husband and I are both artists. Um, our trip started, I mean, it started in West Virginia, obviously, but uh, the first site that we visited was Cahokia Mounds, wow. and that was in Missouri, um, Cahokia mounds are these ancient Indian burial mounds, and it used to be like one of the biggest cities. So it was a huge city at one time, and now it's just these these mounds, and you can visit them. And to be quite honest, I was I stayed in the car because it was like a thousand degrees, and uh, my husband really, really, really wanted to hike up to the top, and I was actually like having some issues um being a woman of a certain age my body decided that i was going to start having hot flashes in the hottest place that we were on the trip and so i stayed in the car or in the the u-haul uh, but my husband hiked up here to the top of cahokia mounds and came back and it's just a really interesting site so we checked that out and let's see what else i got well, now they would say that's probably a pyramid or something, Terry, don't you think? Yeah, could it be. Was like, yeah, it, looks, it looks like maybe the top was shaved off or whatever. Right, or so, more of it beneath ground. Yeah, there are pictures. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture of what it used to look like, but it's a really interesting site, and there are these terraces. Yeah. So like, it's like there was like a plaza here, and yeah. then it would go back up, and then there was a structure that was built up here. And so it was, it was a really interesting place. And if you go to the site, they have a museum and you can actually go in 
And I found out that the museum has air conditioning. And so that's, <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice. And there was a really nice woman there that saw me. And I think she was scared. I think she thought I was going to pass out or something. And she gave me a, a bottle of ice water and I got to sit in the museum. So it was really nice, really nice people work there. I just and then them. they're hiring right now. So if anybody's out there, you need a job, you can go to Cahokia Mounds. <laughs> Dude, that, my husband might sign up for that. He might, he might go. Um, no, just kidding. He can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered wrap snacks, which was really good. <laughs> wow. There we are in the van driving across country. Um, these are probably way out of order, but the next stop I think was Oklahoma. And we found this place. Um, this is in Oklahoma city and it's a site called the womb and it's owned by the front man from the flaming lips band. And it's kind of an arts venue. They have concerts there. Um, there's all kinds of installation art going on. I've seen pictures of the place since then, and it's it looks a lot different. There's there's a lot of different um, things going on there, but the the mural is still mostly the same. And the mural was painted by one of my favorite artists, Maya Hayek, and um, she she did all this stuff on the outside. And there's like poured paint in some of these places. She does a lot of art where she just literally pours paint down the side of the building. And it looks really cool. The door looks like a womb, huh? It sure does. We pulled up in front of there and my husband said, is that? And I said, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Show enough. And so you can see she does a lot of this art like on the insides of windows, especially where she oh. just pours the paint down. And then here's some more drips. I love her work because it's very fun and colorful and um. We almost ran into some trouble here because there wasn't a good place to park. And so my husband had to try to figure out how to like, I don't know if you've seen that scene in Austin Powers where he's trying to turn that vehicle around in that tight space and he's just going back and forth and back and forth. We had to do that to get the van out of there, but it was worth stopping at. It was really cool. And then when you enter in through the front door, there, there was a broken window. So I was able to get this picture because it was closed when oh. we were there. So trippy. So I desperately want to see the inside, but I didn't get to go on the inside. And then it's a nighttime type of venue, right? Or I mean, probably it's just open whenever they have an event. So it looked like they had some special events going on at different times. And there was some kind of like family event going on um, a couple of days after we were there. But there's graffiti all the way around. So when you go to different parts of the building, some of the stuff I don't think is Maya Hayek's. Like, I think this was put on there afterwards, possibly, because it doesn't really look like most of her work. Or maybe she just got people involved from the community. But I'm kind of a graffiti enthusiast, especially since I moved to Oakland. Because there's some really good graffiti out here. And I think a lot of people think of graffiti as being like, just stuff that people do in the middle of the night you know you put on like you're all black and you sneak out there and you like throw some stuff up on the wall and of course that's the thing but a lot of graffiti artists make good money and it's just an art form so and graffiti sometimes will actually uh improve a building's uh like the the value of the building because it becomes kind of like a destination kind of like an, a public art piece you know yeah true um, not saying that everybody should just run out and tag buildings, but you know, there, there are some things like if, a, if Banksy tags a building, it, people will do anything to protect that, that art. That's awesome. And so we then passed, I'm probably not doing this in the right order. Um, maybe, I don't know. We passed Car Hinge. Car Hinge is an art installation and it's just all of these old cars that are just sunk into the desert and it's not really desert but into the ground um, and they stick up kind of like stonehenge and they've been there for a bajillion years and people keep graffitiing and the more graffiti the more color so <laughs> it looks different all the time this is not my photo this is um we weren't able to get very close to it because of the truck and also because it was really hot So and then, then, if you go to visit that place, take a can of spray paint. Is that what you're saying? 
I mean, I'm not saying you should, but I'm not no. saying you should either. Yeah. I can neither conform, confirm, no, nor you confirm. cannot. <laughs> And so we, um, at this point, we were on the footprint of the old Route 66. And so that's where you get to see a lot of these cool old places back from uh, this Route 66 days. Here's a place that we stopped. And honestly, I don't remember exactly where this was. Holbrook, Arizona, I believe. Um, this was really cool. We stopped here and got some amazing tacos, but it's just that 19, uh, 1950s, 1960s era, you know, kind of Route 66 kind of place. Holbrook was really cool. Holbrook is like this little town that is it. I mean, it, it kind of exists because of the Route 66 lore, you know, I mean, I'm sure that there are other things there. Um, but that time period really is kind of still alive in Holbrook. And then we saw, I don't know if you've seen the movie Cars, but uh, the Pixar movie, this was my kid's favorite movie. We watched it a million times. They had the Cozy Cone Hotel. Mm -hmm. I think it was based on these wigwam hotels. These are like little concrete wigwams or concrete teepees. And inside it, it just looks like a regular hotel room. Oh, cool. It's just kind of round. And so you pull up your little car and you can sleep in a teepee and uh, get up in the morning and get back on the road <laughs> we did not stay in there though my husband is a native american studies uh person that's what his doctorate is in and um he does not like the use of native american iconography by people who are not native american and um i get that because you know probably the people that own this it's not their culture and so it's good to to represent your own culture and not try to represent other people's culture um, so I get it. So we, he, I, I asked him if we could stay there and he was like, no, <laughs> but it is really cool. It was kind of neat to see because it is indicative of the like route 66, you know, everybody trying to come up with the, the cool things on the side of the road for people to stop at. Right. So that was really fun. And then once we got to California, we stopped at this place called the Baghdad cafe. You've probably heard of the movie. Yeah. Baghdad Cafe, which actually I still haven't seen. So I'll have to watch it at some point. Um, but this again was a, a Atlas Obscura site. And um, this is in the middle of the desert. It's actually not very far from Joshua Tree. And, um, but it's like, it feels like you're a million miles from anything. It is, it is way out there. And so we stopped here for breakfast and we met this really interesting dude that runs the place, this guy. So there's me and my husband, and this is the guy that runs the place and he makes an awesome omelet. And we had a really good time uh, talking about life at the Baghdad cafe. It was pretty fun. He has a lot of stories about interesting people that have come in from all over the world. And when you visit, you're supposed to put something on the wall. Oh. So everybody, put something up there and you've got, I mean, entire flags, you've got business cards, photos, all kinds of wild things, t-shirts. We saw underwear. <laughs> all you have is a thong. I mean. <laughs> so what did you, what, what did you guys put up? So I put up, this is my business card. Oh, so put, from your, from your mural. What? Yeah. Cool. So this is actually a painting of Frida Kahlo that I did in the pixelated oh. style. Okay. Oh, I see the Frida. Yeah. She's one of my favorites, but like, you can see this one. This is somebody's like a little note and it's, I don't know. Is that Japanese maybe? Uh, it looks Chinese to me. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but yeah. It's um, Chinese. Yeah. So there's a little card up here and this, that almost, oh, this is from uh, California, but the name actually sounded like uh, something from like Maori language or something. So it's really cool. It's neat. People uh, leave all of their, their things up there. And then this is what's outside the Baghdad cafe. Like when I said, there's nothing there, I like, I'm not even kidding. It is miles of desert, just way out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was our trip it was really fun and I highly recommend 
if anybody has the opportunity, if you have the luxury of that kind of time to drive across the country to just do it, it is, it is so cool. And, you know, get off of the interstate, see some of these little towns, use Atlas Obscura so that you can find the weird stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm going to write that down and remember that Erica, when I come to visit you, ah, you're right. You're right. I'm sure that they have sites in Canada too. Like what part of Canada are you in? Um, I am in right in the middle of the country, Winnipeg. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Do you live there or are you just visiting? No, I, I live here. You live there? Cool. <laughs> it's turning dark now, by the way, Erica. Now it's turning dark. I was really concerned that Terry had so much light shining through the windows. It's just me. <laughs> She's like, like okay? one, hour, one hour away. <laughs> and it's still daylight <laughs> i was going to show you some of the other ones some some more strange things that i saw while i was gone too oh cool yeah because you said graffiti we're going to start with graffiti so this uh, was yes oh wait a minute am i sharing now yep i think you are yeah okay and so you guys can see i don't know what you guys will see let's see oh there, that, that way I'll do that. Okay. That was some graffiti underneath a bridge in Belgium. That is so cool. Trying to make it as big as possible. And I just thought, wow, this is amazing because this is just underneath the bridge. And this was another one. I'll never forget this one. Those are so cool. I can't see you where I just know it's underneath the bridge in Belgium. <laughs> we walked, we walked so much in that city. And then let's see, we got some more. These were, was this Belgium? This was Amsterdam. Amsterdam seemed to have like some really neat graffiti. Ooh, is, is that wild. Mickey Mouse? Something like that. I don't think I can call him that. I was oh, say. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm totally kidding. I, I'm totally kidding. I guess it's like a rendition of Mickey Mouse. And so this must be a, a Donald Duck, maybe? Yeah. Over there. Um, well, you know, what's funny is Disney will sue if you, if you use any of their images or anything Disney-like. Yeah. And so... Uh, this person was smart in changing it so that it's not like straight up Disney Mickey Mouse, you yeah. know, it's different. And that's really what artists should do is make it, make it different. Like you can, everybody knows what they're talking about. Right. But like, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little different. Ooh, go back. Oh, All right. wow. So this, oh goodness. I'm just changing the picture and don't know what I'm doing y'all. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so and it's underneath these two air conditioning vents. I like that they made them look like speakers, though. Yeah. Kind of steampunk or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, it was cool to walk so that you could see more of everything. This guy, for some reason, looks like a fry guy or something. Um, <laughs> Uh, can I can I just sort of interject something when you yeah. said it kind of looks steampunk? Do you know where that term steampunk comes from? No, from I don't. The from the Tatarian civilization, that was the steampunk is actually from Tataria. What? So so when you look at you know everybody talks about steampunk, it wasn't something that actually happened in the 1880s. It was from another from another parallel time system from Tataria. Whoa. Wow. That's interesting. Hmm. I did not know that. It's funny how we we're hitting that topic. <laughs> now this was Amsterdam. I consider this like the mortar man because you're just walking down the road and it wasn't like a busy road. It was some like some side street. And this was on the ground, this is in the ground. Oh, wow. But it is in the red light district, so. What an interesting way to like fix a hole, you know? Like there's <laughs> just like missing bricks and like you're just gonna put some art there. Make it a gallery. 
And then there was this. I love this. This was a town called Castle. So we would just jump in the car over in Germany and we would just ride places. And it just was a little walking, a little butt, <laughs> a kettle butt, kettle butt. And uh, that butt was base. But, um, and then I did want to show that art struck the structure because I'm, I just look at buildings now and then look at these kinds of buildings that they have. That's just the front door of a church over in, this would be Belgium. Oh, wow. And it's the Our, Our Lady of Sablon Church over there. But I took more pictures, but... I mean, I had that little camera working hard that day, so. <laughs> I mean, I would too. What a cool place. And the yeah. intricacy of all that carving is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there was, a, there was another site with the 50 largest. I went nuts while, while, while everybody was doing something else. I was, uh, I was, <laughs> oh, I'll go back to your website with the Obscura. So there were some weird landmarks. And I think, was one of them yours? I just like just driving and seeing strange things. So this one was Rhode Island, some type of giant blue bugs thing. Then there was this igloo there in Alaska. Oh, wow. This is an abandoned hotel in Alaska. That is weird. Dear you, Terry, come on. Dear you, just go to this place. <laughs> I just Alaska's like, pretty far from me. <laughs> yeah. Elvis Presley's birth house. Oh, birth oh, place. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. That's called a shotgun house because you can yeah. shoot a gun through the front door and it goes out the back door. Yeah. That's, I was going to say slingshot, but you got it. That one's tiny. And a crypto zoo, international crypto zoo, zoology museum. I think I would like to go there. That would be interesting. Cause I'm gonna need to see some, uh, look, he's got an egg. I, just I wonder if they have Mothman from West Virginia. Okay, so it's- Oh his. yeah, it says Mothman, they have him. Here. Oh, down down the further. second paragraph it says uh, oh that's so cool that movie mothman prophecy too wake up number 37 <laughs> <laughs> so you well, know they have a mothman statue in point pleasant west virginia and something because of this game called fallout um they actually uh like people leave beans like cans of beans as 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 a tribute to Mothman. I don't know why, but the, so they've actually started asking people not to leave beans because they were getting so many beans. And then this Salvation Mountain is um, we've actually been there. That's actually down a little bit south of Palm Springs. And uh, this guy just like made this, and it's just it, all it is is like a adobe like on the on the hillside. Oh, wow. There's a car. Yeah. The salvation. That place is wild. And there's a video. Um, oh my God. What's her name? Um, I'll think of her name. There's a singer and she filmed a video there and I can't think of the name of the singer. It'll come to me in a minute. Go to church or the devil will get you. <laughs> That's a funny one. This is in Alabama. So you, okay, so that's a repeat of the igloo. Then they got this turquoise McDonald's. No big deal. I think that's interesting. Christ of the Ozarks. I just love random weird stuff. Down Amy here we have a jerky a store. store. Down here we have a strip club with a with the a, a spaceship on top. Nice. I swear, I think there's aliens probably working in there. You know, I just, I will testify. <laughs> the alien workers. 
with like a fake leg, you take it off and something else happens. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, but you didn't get the pass. You don't have the, you didn't have to pass Colorado. Uh, we didn't go to Colorado. We stayed south of Colorado. Okay. So this one, I guess the, they didn't want to put 420. <laughs> what? People well, four- keep stealing the sign. Oh, oh my God. Why are you so smart? I like hanging out with you. Okay. People keep stealing the sign. That's exactly why. So they put four point. People would steal the sign. <laughs> In Connecticut, there's a frog bridge. I don't know why they put a giant frog on the bridge. Wow. Well, it has something to do frogs because one summer night in night in, in 1754, the whole town was awakened by a dreadful noise, convinced they were under attack. The group of men took guns, crept out bravely into the dark, and the daylight revealed that the attackers were hundreds of frogs, now mostly dead. Oh no. <laughs> Poor okay. frogs. And there's this giant medical bag out in Delaware. Oh, I wow. would say this. I notice now though that it seems like Columbia, South Carolina, they they do this. This this is supposed to be shaped like a thumbnail or like a toenail. Oh, that is so strange. So this is down here where I live. They call it the I saw on I four. Um, the person who originally uh, was constructing the building. They ran out of funding. A church was going to do it and they ran out of funding. Oh, wow. And, uh, so it just got stuck unfinished for the longest time. That is some interesting architecture. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was ugly. It looks almost like this. If they put a beak on it, then it would be like that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Oakland, we have a big church that's like, round and then it has like a slice missing and everybody calls it the salad spinner pineapple maze they got a giant dog park in dog oh, that's cool good i was hoping i would find ones that were cool for you guys giant ketchup bottle what city is that illinois oh maybe we'll see this on maybe. the way to the truth uh conference Hmm, interesting. Collinsville. I don't know where Collinsville is. Why we need a giant ball of paint, but yeah, it's a giant ball of paint in Indiana. Giant cow. Ball. Ball of twine. Have you seen those, the balls of rubber bands where they have like giant balls of rubber band? This was fine. Oh yeah. Kentucky fried chicken water tower that's what it looks like <laughs> louisiana i don't see what this is must be the chimes chimes yeah ll bean oh. and their giant boots I wanted to find some good ones for you guys this person has a ouija board as a gravestone okay yeah that's well, how do you keep the planchette from falling off? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that's not the place I want to play with a Ouija board, though, at a graveyard. No. Like, uh, Big no. So uh, orange. I don't even know. That's just an orange. I'm not sure what the significance of this, 185. Oh, it goes through. Does it go through the mountain? Oh, night, find where it. motor vehicles are banned. There's oh wow, no vehicles are allowed on the island. So instead, the highway is used to walk or cycle or horses. That's kind of nice. Okay. Uh, did you need lines? And I guess for the horses, huh? The horses need lines. Got to stay in the bicycles. Line. Yeah, cyclists. Giant <laughs> spoon in Minnesota, a spoon bridge. All right. 
Oh, and then a dog. You can't skip the doggy. <laughs> and then that was a repeat of the birthplace of Elvis. Then there's a giant fork. So they should have put it in the road. Yeah, oh, very oh, good. Oh, I like that, Rebecca. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh in Missouri. Safeguard Montana Complex. That Wait. looks austere. Oh, this I think this was on TV. It's a failed military missile base that they were used. I remember I think they had this before too, where they build a whole airport or something and never used it. And they spoke oh, about geez. how much money spent. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, yeah, right. So was that no, this was a different car hinge. Yeah, this is different because I wasn't in Nebraska. That's really cool. That's why I wanted to show you this. Okay. That's a I different think, one. These look like real cars. Yeah. But cars, there are also some scrap metal dinosaurs there for some reason. <laughs> I like that for some reason. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's a good reason for the car hinge, but like the dinosaurs are for some reason. <laughs> so now people might want to go here with some spray paint. Uh, <laughs> maybe you don't know. Okay, so Nevada Area 51 alien mailboxes. They got NASA stickers on it. Okay, which book this about? So I'm picking this kind of creepy, kind of weird, kind of oddly charming mailbox in the middle of Rachel, Nevada, 12 miles from the famous Area 51. It's the only landmark for 40 miles, and it's a good meeting spot for UFO enthusiasts. But they don't say who the mailbox is for. Mm, I get this might be where those letters to Santa Claus go. New Maybe you can like send a letter to et and just yeah. Put it yeah. in there. <laughs> a new hampshire stonehenge this looks kind of small though in salem new hampshire america's stonehenge looks like the actual stonehenge cool little historical site with good hiking and snowshoe trails that's cool new jersey this elephant named lucy hmm when I was little, I mean, I would love when I was little to try to make my parents pull over for stuff like this, but they would never do it. So, <laughs> oh. New oh, I like the pistachio. Yeah. So, do you remember the the fountains in front of the library in Charleston, the green fountain? Yeah. And they were like they were kind of shaped like that, and there was the the um, peanut shop across the street. Uh -huh. And so when I was little, my babysitter used to take me to the library and then we would go to the peanut shop and she would always get pistachios and we would sit in front of that fountain. And for the longest time, I thought the fountain was supposed to be pistachios because that's what it looked like. It was green and like kind of shaped like that. Was it not a pineapple? I don't know where I'm from. They got a giant pineapple instead of a it's kinda, it was just an abstract thing. Right. So like, I don't think anybody knew what it was supposed to be, but it looked like pistachios to me. <laughs> well in north carolina they got the world's largest frying pan that's a big frying pan i'm wondering because i always wanted to go to the contest where they have like the world's largest pancake and then everybody comes and eats a part of the world's largest pancake that's cool but that would be like a hell of a um funnel cake if you could do that <laughs> salem sue is there's Size? that thing looks pretty big that's a big old cow complete with incredibly lifelike veiny udders all right um Ohio. i've seen this before that's a building right yeah that's like the longa burger basket company or something oh. their building looks like a basket longa burger basket you really into these uh because <laughs> you actually know some of the sites just the ones that I've seen. Yeah. The Oklahoma blue whale of Katusa. Okay. I would feel like I was in heaven. It is on Route 66 in Oklahoma. Oh my gosh, I missed that one. We'll have to go back. Okay. <laughs> Smallest park. Oh God, it's this little thing right there. Yep. We have one in Berkeley too. There's like a little 
like a little place where somebody took a tree out and it just left a little hole in the sidewalk and uh somebody put like a little playground in there mm -mm, mm -mm, this is too funny pennsylvania coffee pot i need that much coffee <laughs> Wow, you probably need it in Pennsylvania for sure. <laughs> a big blue bug. So I don't know what the big blue bug is. That's the second time. Big blue bug in the festive mood and sports its own set of antlers and a big red nose. Mm, vandalized. Someone vandalized the statue and the whole state went insane. But luckily it was cleaned up and back brought back to normal. South Carolina. I've never even seen this. Where is this in South Carolina? Every time you say Charleston. Oh, and Gaffney. No wonder. That's up by Columbia. But when you say Charleston, I'm thinking about Charleston, South Carolina instead of Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. And whenever I would go back to West Virginia, some they would lose my luggage. All kinds of fun things would happen. <laughs> Landing at the airport in Charleston is pretty crazy in Charleston, West Virginia, because it's got a really short runway. And so whenever they, they land there, they have to put it in reverse and like stop it really fast. It's like landing on an aircraft carrier. It's like really fast. The Everybody on the plane goes, ah, and I'm just like, no, it's cool. We're good. Uh, <laughs> I, I was rode to Greyhound. <laughs> there you go. The world's only corn palace i've heard of corn palace mm -hmm. south dakota and then the sun sphere what do you think about that terry well that's interesting isn't it, looks it? Like, well, it reminds me of solid gold the, the yeah. show the TV yes show. solid gold i wonder if this has a purpose though like no. a gigantic gold disco ball on the stick there's more to it than that. Oh, and it's on an episode of The Simpsons. Ah. Prada, Mar what the? What? In Valentine, Texas, basically a sculpture of a Prada store that is literally in the middle of nowhere. That's amusing. Good night. Who would spend the money to do that? Mm, the the black ice cream cone. Hmm. John's black ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, interesting. Oh, Jimmy. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Oh. That's Vermont whale tails. Just whale tails. See? That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Re Reverence is a sculpture in South Burlington, Vermont, created by Jim Sardarnas in 1989, depicts two whale tails diving into a sea of grass. It's meant to symbolize the fragility of the planet. Visitors can catch a glimpse of the sculpture on I-89. Okay, Roanoke Star. Nicknamed Star City. This, see now, see this is where Washington, Fremont troll. So that's in Washington. My my uh I call him my bonus son, my stepson, but I don't like to use the term stepson because that sounds negative. Lives in Washington. And like you can this is just chilling out underneath the bridge. You're just driving along and all of a sudden there's just a troll and he's just wow. hanging out there. He's holding he's a Volkswagen beetle. Oh, I just, just noticed that. It's really cool <laughs> and it's huge. Huh. Oh my okay, gosh, the pink elephant. Virginia. Have I used you to seen drive past that all the time. Oh, wow. So there's not just a pink elephant in the room. <laughs> Bourbonsville, West Virginia. Life-size pink elephant on the side of Route 60. It was purchased by a man for his wife as a present while he was away on business. Okay. Thanks, all right. It was... <laughs> Wisconsin's the world's largest six pack. Oh, okay, I see it. Nice. Huh, oh, it's not. It's not Budweiser. I see. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh very, very funny, yeah. Terry. My screen is it blinking? 
Oh, it's my screen breaking. They took nope. over my screen. Okay, it's like, oh, no more for Erica. You thought you were funny, didn't you? Ha ha. Okay, so I won't. Okay, so strangest. Okay, so Cadillac Ranch. That was that's yours. What it is. And that's the Georgia Guidestones thing again. Our... Thank goodness they're no longer there. And then Switzerland, the fork. There's another fork and it's still not in a road. Everybody's missing this opportunity. <laughs> there you go. There's your next installation, Rebecca. There you go. Genghis Khan. And where is this? In Asia? That's Mongolia. in Mongolia. Yeah. Oh, wow. Easter Island. I have always wanted to go to Easter Island. Fallen Angel Square in Madrid, Spain. So these are far off. In Chile, the hand in the desert. Oh, wow. Never heard of this. Never heard of this. We got a lot of work to do, ladies. Yeah. Spring okay. Temple Buddha in China. That would be amazing to walk up to something like this, though. Right? That would be so oh, cool. How do you do this? How do you do you pour it? Do you just keep taking buckets and put, I mean, what, how do you put this together? I have no idea. That blows my mind. Like, I don't know, like, what it's even made of. If it's metal, like making anything metal that huge, I have no idea how you would do that. Where, where put, is that? Where is that picture? China this is in China. I know, but one hundred. Okay, to see copper, he's copper. A hundred, wow. one thousand tons. So one ton is two thousand pounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So one thousand times two thousand. I mean, like the, the Statue of Liberty is like pieces that are like bolted together. Like if you go inside, you can actually see like rivets and bolts and stuff. So I'm oh. guessing it's done something like that. I don't know. It's crazy. This stuff blows my mind. That's two million pounds. <laughs> 128 meters high. All right. The Headington Park. No, Headington Shark, Oxford, England. Oh, okay. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, so. So Terry, in the chat, I left a, a link to the Atlas yeah. Obscura list of things to do in your neighborhood. So okay. you'll, have to, you'll have to report back if you see any. I will, people. yeah. <laughs> It's it's getting to be spring around here, so um, it's easy to go out on a tour. Nice. Turkey, Stonehead, and Turkey. Oh, those are so wild. They, they look like they look, little gnomes. Yeah, they look right? like gnomes. I wonder why they have yeah. pointy, pointy hats. You'll have to tell me about that, Terry. Yeah, I, I don't know. Huh. Hmm. Tiger and turtle. Yeah. Okay. Tiger and turtle. A roller coaster that you walk upside That's down. Crazy. What? You walk, huh? huh? No, thank you. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you walk upside down. It's a sculpture. Oh. How do you walk upside down? I I don't know. Holy crap. Maybe, maybe the top loop is kind of like the monkey bars that you go, I don't know. <sighs> Even if it's yeah. difficult to walk upside down the creator sculpture. Oh no. And the Stonehenge of England. All right, so those were cool, amazing, weird. Oh, then here, since we were talking about weird statues, I don't know. We could skip that one, but that one in New York at the at the courthouse, because it has a huge pop-up and it won't let me won't let me look at it properly. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I think I have a picture of it here. Here it is. Oh, wow. Well. Do it do anything? My computer is just telling me to stop. <laughs> yeah, it's just telling me like, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's frozen right there. No. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to check it out though. Medusa does not want to talk to us. I guess what? not. That <laughs> is really funky. Not responding. Wow. The whole of Internet Explorer just kicked me out. Okay, well, that was that. <laughs> so, so when you saw the mortar man, let me ask you, did like his facial expression is so stressful. Yeah. Did it bother you? I saw some other people, they were like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> like, like, don't make me look. <laughs> I've just always been fascinated. Like, I want to know if he was if he's supposed to look like he's being crushed or if he's supposed to look like he's just determined to get out or, you know, what is it, what is that expression supposed to be? And it's kind of different for every, every person who sees it, right? Like some people look at it and they're like, oh, he looks stressed. And some people are like, no, he looks determined, you know? So I don't know. So when did that appear? What, what year do you think that was made? You know what? I have no idea because when I learned about it, I, I didn't do, do, uh, you know my first impression was is it was somebody coming out of the rubble after some kind of destruction yeah that's kind of where so, I was so with it, it was it was that was my first thought when I saw that that picture and he's curious as to what's on the other side here yeah what he's kind of giving side eye it? yeah it's it's more of a uh, of a curiosity to me. Like what 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 am I coming into? See now you you brought up to Tartaria and that's it's interesting because the buildings in West Virginia are huge and you're you're thinking when did they create these buildings? That's kind of the thing about Tartaria or what people are saying even about the Capitol building and the Pentagon buildings like. The buildings have been here for longer than we know. And that it's like, we're new inhabitants. And I felt like when I saw it, that he is like, like, like you know how they say, we're life is breathed into us and we come from the dirt and we're crawling out of the mud and into a, a, a civilization that's already been here before us. And that's how far it went for me. So I was just like, he's crawling into this creation, into this world and discovering all these things. But I guess that's how we are regardless, you know, because we're we're crawling into this, this civilization, trying to find our place here. And just, I'm wowed by the, the structures that we see. I mean, but I was even telling Rebecca, I stop when I see a tree falling down and split or I'm just like, oh my God, but I just, I love observing the surroundings and I really want to know why the hell somebody put that there. <laughs> like, I want to know, like, why did you do this? Like, why would you put these whale tails here? And, you know, it's Well, fine. this was created by, the guy's name is P. Joseph Mullins and he actually created a lot of the more traditional memorials like in in uh, like at the capitol building in west virginia and so um he just kind of did it on a whim you know mm -hmm. and i i don't know like he's, he's only he's just a little guy like he's not very big and he's just kind of like poking out between and it's just one of these little things it's like you're walking downtown and you don't even notice it but then when you notice it it's magical because you have like this little this little person there and it's like where did he come from and what's he about you have to keep making contact with him like if, if every day you have to come out of class and you're like okay check on him once a week like because the the building that we were in is right here and that building then you come outside the building down the steps and he's he's like right there across the street, like 
come come outside of the door of this building and just walk right there. He was like right there for every every day. And they took him down. There was a, a little, there was, they did some some work on that building and they actually took him down and people freaked out and they brought him back. Oh. It, even the fact that part of the building is red brick and part of the building is mortar like that, sculpted mortar, it's uh, it's odd. You know what I'm saying? That it's an odd combination. These are just some of the capital capital buildings, but I always um, I always wonder how they put gold on top of these buildings. And it's actually gold leaf. Uh, so when I was a kid, the see how they have the dark gray part mm. that wasn't there. It used to all be gold, and then they put in the the gray design. But there for a while they had uh, like during the teachers. I don't know if it was during the teacher strike or it was around that time. I can't remember. Um, they actually put a tent over the top of the dome and they actually like adhere the, the gold leaf on the outside of the, of the Capitol. And it was kind of funny because uh, it looked like a condom. It was like, just kind oh of my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> so everybody had a laugh about the, the legislature screwing us, you know. <laughs> and it's funny that the other it side goes laugh, out to the right? water. <laughs> it made sense. It was it was appropriate. Yeah, you can see like down if you look at the bottom, the, there's like a bottom picture here and it has like scaffolding around the dome. That's what they had to climb on to get to put the, the gold leaf on there. And they actually have these guys that go in there with this adhesive and they paint the adhesive on and smooth on the gold and then lacquer it. Wow. I don't know if it, if and when people watch the video, can they see our heads in the way? And I then the other side goes out the and, and the other, ooh, and the other side goes out into the water. Yep. Right? That's like facing the Capitol right here. Nice. So this side with the bell is on the back and then the other side is facing the water. Yeah, amazing. I, I never did go in there, but I wish I did. Well, I thank you for hanging out with us. And like Terry said, the weather is changing. It's time to go outside and scout out what we can see and bring back that intel, right? Yes. Um, June, I can't wait. I want to find something obscure when I'm in Egypt that no one saw yet. Well, of course, someone has seen it, but just it hasn't been put online. And so I can just be like, see, I found this little tiny trap door. <laughs> <laughs> stuff something, is everywhere. something beautiful something cool something hidden that just is not seen that only you you know that only few people pay attention to and that's that's the beautiful thing and it was so cool to just out of the blue be able to google and you helped me find it so you helped me find this thing so I was just like oh my god this is so exciting well, it was so nice to hear from you and just to get this message in my inbox, you know, because usually the, those random messages from people I don't know are, are not anywhere near as exciting <laughs> as what I got from you. And it was, it was really neat to hear from somebody that that article like brought somebody some joy, you know, because yeah. that's what it's about. We make these things for joy, right? Whether we're making articles or, you know, making the artwork, it's, it's to bring joy. So in other words, if you're going to stalk people, do it for positivity. Do it. <laughs> Stalking for positivity. <laughs> Thank people. You know, too, we um, we have these um, tarot cards that uh, the lady's middle name was with a T and we were trying to see, oh, was it? Her name is Terry, wasn't it? Her last name was Smith or something, T. Smith, whatever it was. Yeah. I was yeah. like, we were stalking her just to see like, hey, is your middle name Terry? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was like but I love these cards that you made because they're just wonderful and then she didn't answer but maybe one day she'll answer but okay who knows yeah. <laughs> Any, anything uh final messages you'd like to make Rebecca how anybody can reach you or like maybe they could throw you if they know some obscure that they I mean my, my name is Rebecca Recco you can find me it's <laughs> 
I couldn't hide from anybody. It's just a <laughs> weird name. So you could you could find me um, if you know of an unusual place that you think that I should go find. Then I will add it to my bucket list of places, weird places that I have to see. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll put it on Atlas Obscura, or you can do it yourself. You can go on there and add your own weird stuff to Atlas Obscura. And they had they were pretty thorough with Ireland, actually. Yeah. I went through the Ireland list and I sent that to our friend Chris Sinatra and uh and Sean Bond because they're going to Ireland this summer. And I, I was like, ooh, maybe this will help you. So and Terry, did you have any words? Um no, I, I think, you know, Rebecca, it's been um amazing just spending this time with you. You you've just uh been so delightful and and so full of um excitement and, and and it just it brings it an, another element to to exploring you know we're often looking for things to explore and just listening to how you created that art and it, it gives us an appreciation for what people how people put themselves out there and and um, it, it 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 becomes like we don't stop to smell the roses so to speak and and I think it's important for us to appreciate what we do see there and what is this piece of what does this piece of art represent you know like many things you know I can say you know from my city alone you know on some of the bridges some of the the statues that are used in the wheat and even in our our local um, buildings and stuff it's it's um, it's quite interesting I, I actually the bank down the street has grain elevators um, they 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 uh, they put a grain elevator when they built onto the bank. The second floor is a, is a whole grain elevator type of thing. So oh, wow. it's kind of yeah, it's kind of interesting. So I, I think sometimes we don't um, we don't see what we don't see. Right. Even looking at the graffiti on on the sides of buildings and and stuff like that. Some of it's beautiful artwork, and and we don't always stop and appreciate it. So thank you for sharing for sharing your view of um, that has gotten us to look to another view for ourselves. Well, awesome! It's been great meeting you, and I love your sparkly glasses. I'm a, oh, I'm thank a, you. <laughs> They're artistic, are they? <laughs> But yeah. I love fun glasses and and it was really great getting to talk to you and you guys are so positive and I love that you love art and you love finding magic out in the world and you know I hope that your journeys are fun and that you stay in touch and let me know all the weird stuff that you find. Okay. This is the fun <laughs> part. This is the fun part. The time to come back outside. The world belongs to you and don't let people hide it from you. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Go find it. Go find it. I love it.